Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now the latest Fortnite update brought with it an Unreal Engine 5 upgrade introducing new features such as Lumen, Nanite, Virtual Shadow Maps and Temporal Super Resolution. We often see Unreal Engine 5 in demos designed to showcase photorealism but this goes to show that such implementations work well where the approach to visuals is more stylized. Fortnite looks absolutely fantastic. Higher detailed geometry and landscapes, high quality ray traced reflections, real time global illumination and detailed shadows come together to really enhance this game. And on top of that, enabling hardware based ray tracing will really let you get the most out of the graphics. Of course, cranking everything up can come at a cost. My mid-range Intel Arc system here is a good example of that. I suspect it's the ray tracing that's eating up most of the frames though, and we could definitely play about with the options to find a far better balance between graphical quality and performance while still enjoying the newly added Unreal Engine 5.1 features. It was then I got to thinking about lower end hardware. Is it possible to experience what the new Fortnite update has to offer without having a powerful graphics card or any graphics card at all for that matter? Hello trusty Ryzen 7 5700G. This has 8 cores, 16 threads and onboard Radeon graphics. It's currently one of the best desktop APUs you can buy and it seems to be getting cheaper by the week. The best way to play Fortnite with this processor is to select the performance mode which offers lower graphical fidelity but will really do wonders for this chip, enabling a solid frame rate even at native 1080p. Now as you can see we don't get any fancy lighting, reflections or shadows here, but what we do get is a solid experience and one that means we can remain competitive without having much graphical power on tap. It's nice to see that lower end hardware users haven't been forgotten about in this latest update. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Now though, I want to see if we can enable some of those recently added and fancy features. I'd like to reiterate that I wouldn't recommend this, I'm just curious to see if we can, and not saying that we should. The following changes will likely hinder your ability to remain as competitive because of the lower frame rate, but how low will the frame rate go? Firstly, I enabled TSR and set it to performance mode, which renders the game at 50% internally while keeping the 1080p-like appearance. We can still enable Nanite Virtualized Geometry, Virtual Shadows and choose Lumen under the Global Illumination and Reflection tabs. Everything else is set to low or off though, so what we're going to be getting here is likely the most subtle Unreal Engine 5 experience. Having said that, we should still notice the changes. Of course, we no longer have access to hardware ray tracing either, not that it matters because even if we did, it would destroy whatever's about to be left of the frame rate. And here we are, Fortnite Unreal Engine 5 running on integrated graphics. Should you? No. Can you? Well, yes. 30 FPS plus is possible as you can see, and we're still retaining some of that beauty that the new features bring with them. The game still looks pretty good, but of course it probably isn't worth it from a competitive point of view. I'm surprised we are still getting at least 30 FPS to be honest, and of course with me as being as skilled as I am, I was still able to get a few kills. It seems like I'm okay at Fortnite, despite being quite bad at most other online shooters. During this gameplay you might notice that the VRAM limit is at times limited to less than 500 megabytes and sometimes it's closer to 2 gigabytes. This is because I changed the allocated VRAM for the integrated graphics halfway through my testing in the BIOS to see if it actually made a difference but from what I saw it did not. The game performed the same and seemed to be allocating all the VRAM it needed automatically anyway. I definitely recommend trying out the new Fortnite settings. I mean, they've been added at no extra cost, so it's a no brainer. And you might find that you can make use of some of the features without sacrificing too much in terms of performance. Fortnite's a free game and these free features pretty much transform it in my opinion. Now, of course, it's not the best idea to do so with no discrete graphics card in your system, but if you are happy with 30 FPS with a few stutters here and there, you can still do so, which is very surprising, to be honest. 
Sorry for the lack of videos over the last few days and the short one today. I'm awaiting some deliveries at the moment and hopefully I'll see you again before we test out the new Witcher 3 update, probably with the same hardware. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.